creating the goal. In this video, I'm going to show you how I created the glow for this image here. It was originally created in a plugin for Photoshop called Honoric. And I'll deal with that in another video because I think that deserves a video on its own. But for now, I wanted to see how I could emulate that in Luminar. And I'm quite happy with the results I got. And I can see where it can be applied to other images. For example, landscapes, sunsets, portraits, I can see where it can be applied to give you a different effect for your images. In this one, I have used it to blow out the highlights, but you don't have to do that. You can use it to subtly enhance portraits, the skin, whatever you are thinking about. It just, it's up to your imagination, it's down to you yourself, and I can see it I have been used in quite a few applications as well. But anyway, just in case you think you're going to see how to cut out the Android, apply the face, apply the background, so on and so forth. I'm not going to do that. I needed this image done really quickly. And because of that, I used the pen tool in Photoshop. I could have done it in Luminar, as you know, but you know it takes a lot longer to do it than that. And I needed this image for something. So I used the pen tool in Photoshop. Applying the, the woman's face can be done via layer transform and then painted in with the brush. The butterfly could be cut out as well. Everything in it can be done in Luminar. But for me, I needed a quick result for a project. That's the reason I used Photoshop. So I'm not going to show you how to cut it out. That's for you if you want to go and try a similar style image. That's for you to go and do. Anyway, let's get on with this and I'll show you how I created the effect of the glow and the ceiling and the lights that I really enjoyed doing. So let's dive right in. Okay, that's us now in Luminar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the process of how to create that glow. Simple sliders in Luminar, but I'll show you the process of it all coming together. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to duplicate the layer. This is the layer that we're going to base everything around. So within this layer, I can start my edits. So the first couple of things I'm going to do, I'm going to get into creative and I'm going to push the mystical right up. So you see the glow is beginning to happen already. I'm going to lift the shadows as well to about there and push the mystical to 100. Next thing, I'm going to get into the autumn effect and I'm then going to add the autumn effect and I'm going to push that as well. So we get that and you can see that softening effect over the entire image. I'll push it to around there. Quite happy with that. Then I'm going to get into the high key and I'm going to push the high key. So let's just see how far I can take the high key to around about say there. Let's push that a bit further. I'm watching these areas up here in particular. Dynamic high key. And that is getting brighter and brighter. Lift the blacks as well. So you can see the effect that I'm going for here. I am then going to go back into light in the essentials tool and I'm going to push the exposure. Because we're looking for that glow, we're looking for that sci-fi movie glow. So we've got that there. And we're going to be working this with layers and layer masks. So we're pushing that there. Let's push the highlights as well. Not too much knowing that we're going to come back and edit these slightly and I'm going to lift the shadows as well. So, so far it looks too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use masks to get this. And I'm going to paint them in manually because I want that white glow to affect the image. Go back into layers and now we're going to choose edit mask because this is the copy of iRobot and I am going to go into edit mask and I'm going to choose brush and automatically it's in the paint so when it's in the paint it's in a hide all mask which means it won't reveal anything until I start painting and as soon as I start painting you'll see everything within this image will disappear the light that I've just created in that second layer and then it will start to paint in. So just so that you can see it, I'm going to make the brush a bit bigger. I'm going to start painting here. So you notice automatically that everything has disappeared. 
and only where I'm painting it's coming back in. So what we do now is I'm going to keep the brush quite big because I quite like the glow that was there and I'm going to take it around there and I know that everything here will light up. I'll go over here and I'll paint that in because we want it to be reflective, we want it to reflect off the top of the Android as well. Where we become a little bit careful is down the face. We don't want it to obliterate the face but we also want it to creep over the face as well. So let's go in here, paint that. Yes it will lose that, I don't mind here. I'm going to take the brush to bit there and paint in there. There's one light up there, there's another light there. So what we're doing is we're looking to enhance everything where the light would have been just to help with the glow. If there's any areas you don't like, that I'm not sure of, but I'll wait to have done there. No, it's going to work in fine there. And then I'll just paint that in there. Paint it in down here. Now we're going to, it's going to affect the butterfly slightly. So what we're going to do is we're going to erase that once we've done the rest of the image. So I'm going to paint in here. I'm going to bring it round there. I'm also going to take it down there, but not onto the floor. Although there would be a reflective glow, I don't want it to go onto the floor too much. So I'm just going to paint it on there. So if it does go onto the floor, it is going to be from the bottom of this. So that's what happens when I take it onto the floor. So I'm going to edit undo and take that back. And I'm going to paint in there. And you never know, as I'm doing this, I might decide that I want it to go onto the floor. Right, I'm going to take the brush size down now and I'm going to paint down that side. Because I want it to fade through the face as well. But I'm going to do this carefully. I'm not just going to paint straight down through it. I want the face to blend into the lights in the background. So I'm going to do that there and then I'm going to come back over that. Just about there actually, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to take the brush down and I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to take it down again and I'm just going to paint in there. So you can see that it's highlighting some of that and some of the Android's face, the woman's face is blending into the background. So is that a light there? No, it's not. It's a part of the actual Android. I'll step that back, Command and Z or Control and Z. I'm going to paint in there a tiny bit more. I'm going to paint some in there, down here. But you'll notice what I'm doing. I have used too small a brush for that. So I'm going to edit undo and take it to there. And it gives a more natural effect with the fade. Let's take it once back over here and it will just and no more catch the floor. Right, so I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to take some of that away. So pressing X on the keyboard takes it to erase. Let's just take some of that back out there. I'm also going to use a smaller brush here to just take away some of the glow on the butterfly. So that's me, I'm quite happy with that. So the next part of this is adding all the flares and the flares come from the freebies that I gave you. Uh, for download in the last video. So as I say, I'm quite happy with that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a new image layer. And in this new image layer, this is all the freebies you got, I'm going to add Lens, Lens Flare 1. So I'll drop that in. And this process now, this is just repetition after repetition. So I'll show you a couple and then I'll speed up the rest. And click Open. That will drop in the centre just there. I'm also going to show you how to change the colour of these for some of them if you want to change the colour. I am going to get into screen mode and it sits there. I want it to sit around that area so what I'm going to do is layer transform and I'm just going to drag it down to there and I'm quite happy with that there. I'm also going to blend, it goes off the edge here and here. I'm also going to blend that back in, so I'll show you at the same time how to do that. So I'll leave that around there. I don't mind the wee highlight there. I'm going to click done. Then I am going to go in to edit mask option, choose brush, and I'm going to choose erase. I'm going to take the brush quite big using the square brackets. Just press once so you get a nice 
blend away there as well and as you see there's a slight line there so we'll take it away there we'll look for any others none that I can see just now so that's that so there's the first lens flare laid in to this image I'm going to show you a couple and as I say I'll speed up the rest so next thing add new image layer we are going to take for this one we are going to take that lens flare there blue lens flare 3 click open that will drop in the same quite happy with that again screen mode so you can see how it works there and we have the effect here I'm then going to layer transform and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the aspect ratio and then drag it down in size just down and I'm going to place that one over here so I'm looking to accentuate and highlight some of the lighter areas in the image so I'm just going to go in there and click done and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate that layer so just go straight in duplicate layer and here it is here already with the screen blend applied then go into layer transform aspect ratio in this case is locked I'm just going to drag that down and decide where I'm going to put it in this image let's go for there let's just place it there so that's the basis of adding the lens flares for this it's now just down to where you're going to place them so I'll add one more I'll show you how to change the colour of it then I'll speed up the video for the rest of them so this time I'm going to add new image layer and this time I'm going to add blue lens flare so it's that one there click open so you get the idea with this it's just repetition, repetition, repetition straight away screen mode and I am going to go into screen and then I am going to go into layer transform aspect ratio is locked, make sure and check that each time and drag it right down in size it doesn't matter what way you drag it, you can drag it left to right or whatever but I'm going to take it down that way and I'm going to drop that right down in size and as you can guess I'm going to place it on there and the reason I'm doing that as well is emphasising towards the butterfly everything's leading towards the butterfly so the more I can emphasise that the better right, so there's one there I'll just make it that size for this video click done again duplicate layer so this is the copy and you can see it in the middle layer transform and in this one I'll show you how to change the colour aspect ratio is locked drag it right down in size and I'll, what I'll do with this one is I'll put it over there and I'll leave this one quite big so as you can see the change in colour as it's happening so for this one if I wanted to change the colour I would just go into colour and advanced settings and then I can just run through the hue and you'll see it changes as I do that so that's how you can change the colour of the flares some work, some don't work too well but that's how you would change the colour of the, the flares so I'm going to leave that one for that I'm going to put three more points in but what I'm going to do is speed up the video for this Hopefully you got something from that and hopefully you can see that it can be applied to other images. Just the process itself and using the glow and the mystical and it can soften the images. It's just it's down to your imagination where you use these sliders and in what imagery you use these sliders. I can see this been used in a sunset and giving an amazing uh, effect for a sunset as well. So it's totally and utterly up to you how you do it and how you apply it. As you see, I never used luminosity blending for, for this. It wasn't what I was after. I wanted that glow to come with it and I could have used luminosity blending and then added the glow afterwards, but it wouldn't work to the way I had visualised it. So that's why I opted for this way. So hopefully that allows you to see and maybe even gives you an idea of thinking, oh, I could really give a soft effect to this portrait 
if I use this, you can use the Orn effect to do it, but if you want to enhance it even further, you can use a multitude of different techniques to bring that out. And I think this will really work with landscape photography and enhancing light. And if you've seen this image here on the Sky on Facebook page, you'll know how I achieved the glow for that as well. So hopefully you found the techniques useful and hopefully you can apply them to some of your own images. Just think outside the box a wee bit. There's loads you can apply these techniques to. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to check out more videos, please check them out in the channel below. If you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because that would be greatly appreciated. Remember, stay safe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.